Hi, my name is Angela Chow. I'm the Programs Manager at Styleworthy Studio, and I'm also an abstract visual artist. In today's workshop, we will be learning how to paint a watercolor wreath, and we will write a little quote in the center. So sit back and relax and grab your supplies, and let's get started. So for this workshop, you will need cardstock or watercolor paper, a set of watercolor paints, I made these myself, a pencil, a dish that you can uh, mix your paints on. This is a ceramic palette. You can also use a plate, a brush. I have two here, one which is finer and then the other one, it's a little bit chunkier. And these are aqua brushes and a mason jar to wash your brushes in. So first step, we will take our pencil and we will draw a circle. Maybe you can't see that. It's a really light circle right there. I'm going to teach you a couple basic flowers that we're going to paint around the edges. So I am going to paint a poppy first. So I'll leave my palette here. You can see the colors that I'm mixing. I'm just going to take some of my red and I'm going to put it on my palette. Just adding some red. And in watercolor, you always apply very thin layers. So I'm just watering down the red and we will go back with more details. So the poppy, I'm going to create five points and I'm just going to wiggle and make like a, like a leaf like that, a petal. And I'm going to do another one. Let me just zoom in a bit. Okay. So I'm just wiggling my brush like that. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Just going to add pigment as I go along. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to add details. I'm just finishing up the circle here. There you go. That's a beautiful poppy. I'm going to do the same one here. Just a little bit lower, and I'm going to create it and make it smaller. I'm just taking the brush, wiggling it. I'm creating about five petals. You can pause this video anytime if you need a little bit of time to just to catch up. So we're just going to leave that and let it dry. We're going to move on to the next flower. I'm just washing my brush here on the side. I am going to create a rose. One of my favorite flowers to paint is a rose. Let's do a purple rose. I'm just picking up some pigment here, adding it to my palette. This is one of the ones I made as well. Um, so for the rose, I'm going to put one right here. And the rose, I always just uh, paint in a circle, but as a dotted line. So I'll start in the center and create an arch like that and I'll keep going all the way around like that. And we are going to go back and add detail. So it looks a bit weird right now. It'll look great when we're done. So there. I'm going to do the same thing just on the opposite side. I'm going to create a little bit smaller. We're going to wait for that to dry and then we'll come back and add more detail. Okay, next let's create some petals and accentuate these flowers. So I'm just going to pick up this green that I have. I'm going to add that to my palette. Just putting some pigment on my palette and then I'll continue uh, to just use for my palette. It's too dark for me so for a leaf I'm just going to create a little arch like this and I'm going to fill it in on the other side. I'm going to create maybe two or three petals on each flower on the poppy. And there you go. That's beautiful. I'm going to take my other brush is a bit more uh, finer point. 
I'm just going to pick up a darker green that I have and I'm going to work on the petals of the rose. I'm just picking up some pigment. The rose petals. Um, let's just take a look at this one over here. I just create like a V shape and then an upside down V shape and then I add it in. So it's a little bit of a jagged leaf. Cut. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And I'll continue that with the other flower. Just picking pigment as I go along because I am going to come back and add more detail. Okay, so my poppy is actually dried now. So let's go in and add some details. I'm gonna pick up a darker red. And from the center of the poppy, I'm just gonna flick out like this, just to add a bit of depth. Do that all the way around. do that with the same poppy down here and all I'm doing is I'm creating flowers and I'm painting them along the pencil line so in the end you are going to have a wreath of flowers there you go so I'm gonna let that dry for a bit I'm gonna go back to my roses uh, they look pretty dried right now I'm just gonna pick up a bit more purple and only along one side, I'm going to add a thicker line. So here I'm just going to add a bit of a thicker line just on one side. I'm going to keep adding water just to create a little bit depth. I'm going to be very sloppy about it. I'm adding water and just allowing my brush to flow. I'm going to do the same thing with the other rows we have on the other side. Just adding as I go along, adding water. I'll continue that after when it dries. So let's work on the leaf. Leaf, I'm just picking up a bit of a dark green. I'm just creating a thin line. Do the same with the other flowers. really awesome so to fill in space I usually like to add wisps I don't know if that's the correct term to use but I always seem to use blue so I'm picking up this blue it's, I call it a uh, butterfly pea flower tea just adding a bit of blue watering it down on my palette and then in different corners I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail like that, it just makes the painting pop. Isn't that beautiful? There are no rules, just paint whatever you feel. Look at that, this painting's already popping. Okay, I'm gonna work on some darker leaves because I feel like we need a little bit of variety right now. So, these are the vines. So you're going to, in a small area, maybe this area, not a lot of distance, I'm just drawing a line on the pencil mark. I'm going to create some branches. I'm going to use my paintbrush and create a V-shape like that. And I'm going to do that in two more places. So I'm going to choose maybe here, the same distance. Also the same V-shape like that. And we will fill, fill this in, picking up a bit more pigment, and I'll do the same over here. So 
So I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna add some uh, leaves. I call these the money tree leaves. So they're just a circle, I'll just add a bit of circle here. And I'm just using whatever pigment I have on my brush, even if it's watery, just to give it some variety of leaves. Look at that. And we will come back and we'll add a little bit more color, but I'm just gonna do this as the base layer. These look a little bit like eucalyptus actually. Isn't that nice? Okay, let's go back to the poppy. The center of the poppy is dark and I don't have any black. So I have some brown, which I'm just picking up and I'll put it on my palette. I always mix on my palette just so there's a variety of colors uh, that are cohesive. So I just take in some brown and all I'm doing is just adding some dots and it's okay if it bleeds into the paint. Looks pretty awesome. I'm gonna do the same thing over here with the other poppy. Look at that, beautiful. Okay, so now we fill in this space. So I have two more spots here. I think um, maybe a yellow flower. Let's do yellow. I have no yellow here. So I'm just taking some of my yellow that's existing on my palette already. I'm gonna paint some daisies. So daisies are really thin. I'm just creating these long lines. And I'm doing 12 o'clock and then I do six o'clock. And I'll do nine o'clock and I'll keep working my way around. Just adding lines between just to fill it out a bit. Just arching it a little bit more like that. Look at that beautiful, my beautiful daisy. I'm gonna create two here. I always like to add variety, variety of brush sizes, variety of colors, um, variety of shapes. So these ones are a tiny bit smaller. I'm just gonna make try to make two of them, even though the second one is a lot smaller. So we're just gonna leave that, I've just finished that. And we will add a black dot at the end. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, uh, these lines don't really go anywhere. I'm actually just going to add a blue dot to the tip of the wisp just to give it a bit of a pop. Look at that. That looks great. Do the same thing on all of them. And you don't have to do this. Or you can, you can also choose different colors. You do not have to follow these colors. Beautiful. So now that the green is dried, just gonna go back and do just a dot. The dot in the center where the branch meets, meets the leaf. We're giving it a bit of a pop here. There you go. Okay. Now the yellow daisy, I'm just gonna add, take a bunch of brown on my brush just going to draw a circle. I'm going to do the same on the others. We will wait for a moment for these to dry. Feel free to add more detail. And then we will work on the writing in the center. I'll teach you a basic calligraphy lesson. And you can gather up your quotes, your favorite quote, whatever you want to write. Uh, then we will write it. So we'll see you soon. Some Crayola markers here. You can use whatever marker you want and you will need a pencil to do your outlines. So I'll teach you some basic calligraphy. We're going to do empowered women empower women. So I'm just going to lay it out with a circle. You can do this on a separate sheet of paper and you can always trace it on a windowsill. So I like to divide it into the four words. So I'm dividing into four sections. So the first one is going to say empowered. And this might take some time to practice, but it's okay. 
Empowered women empower women. I'm just laying it out so I don't misspell anything. So this has a total of nine letters. So I'm just going to roughly, you can also use a ruler, of course, just roughly divide up a couple sections for the letters. That's nine here. Women is, let me divide that up more, is five. So I'm dividing the center section, then the two. Empower is uh, seven. So I'll divide up the set, set, center section and then three along the outside. And the last one is five letters, dividing up the center and the edges. So I'm pretty much just counting how many letters and creating a grid myself. So depending on how many uh, lines you have, this is four words, so it's four different lines. And then I divided it up by section. So I'm just gonna start with the second word, which is women. And the basics of calligraphy is that any downstroke you have is harder. So let's say the word love. As you go up, down is a harder stroke. You can always go over it twice like this. And O is also a downstroke, so I'm gonna go over it twice. V, that's a downstroke right here. And E. That's the very basics of cheating calligraphy. And you can make that a bit nicer too. So let's just go because uh, some of these words are really long. So I'm gonna use block lettering, uh, calligraphy block lettering. So we'll do it in that order. So I'm just writing within the space I have. And like I said, any downstroke is double the thickness. So any downstroke I have, I'm just quickly going back, making it a little bit thicker. Okay, now women, also staying within here, same rules, downstroke, downstroke, down, down. And now here, we'll also go block lettering again. Same thing, just fill in the rest, fill in all the downstrokes. I did a poor job here of spacing women so I can always just thicken out some of the lines. And this one we'll do calligraphy again, same rule. And same downstroke. And there you go, that is within the circle. And now what you can do is take this and put it against a window and then transfer it onto your drawing that way. Or you can just wing it and put it on the paper, which is what I'm gonna do. So let's do that next. Here's the drawing we created together. And I'm going to start off with the two center words just for myself, just so I can get my spacing right. So let's go women. Empower. Women. Oopsie, I didn't measure enough and went over the daisy. So now that I've written it out, I am just going to thicken up the downstrokes and then we are done. And you can pause this, you can always go back to it if you wanted to and create your own watercolor wreath. And that's it. 
Thank you very much for joining me today for the workshop. We have more workshops at Styleworthy Studio, 8 Maiden Lane, weekly. So I hope to see you there. Bye for now.